Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, it's a very good time to have a sale, isn't it? It is. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. And actually, what's very interesting also is that there are some stocks, fabulous companies that have just been beaten down over the last uh, six to eight weeks. And um, there are stocks that look very overbought. So I, I think that this is a great time to be looking at how you can set up a portfolio getting started to go into January of 2022. And uh, we've raised some cash, and I think this is kind of what we're looking at right now. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the Fed because you're looking at the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ saying hey, quite a bit of a struggle here. You're looking at the semiconductor in index. I went through that on my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour today, and I went through yesterday. There are a lot of these semiconductors that look like they've been fantastic leaders, and now they just need a breather. So I think this rotation is fascinating. And when you're talking about markets, usually you get the defensive. I don't mean Raytheon. I mean stocks like Coca-Cola and uh, General, General um, Mills. You, these are stocks that when markets are going down sharply, those, these are the stocks that people go into. Yes. But we've got, you know, we've been at close to record highs for the past m number of weeks. And um, you've got the combination of, uh, General Mills going to almost all-time highs, um, and you've got you know some of the some of the indexes that were very close to high. So this is a very unusual market, and I, I I've said to subscribers we've got to we can't be afraid. We've got to look at what's working and go with that. And you put in your stops if you're long or if you're short. You put in your buy stop, whatever it is, and just let the market tell you. I mean, there are patterns that I follow all the time. For instance, there's this one that looks like where, where the price rises sharply and then it starts to come down and starts to make lower, lower highs and lower lows. Then all of a sudden it finds a base and it rallies sharply and it breaks that trend line that was coming down. And that's usually very positive. Well, yeah, I'm going to keep the chart up uh, this in the middle of the other with the gray background. But look, here's the Dow on the left. This is the daily chart. Where did it stop? It stopped right at a trend line. At the, look, there it is. This is the pattern that we were looking at. Uh, straight line up and then you come down. So it's very, it's, for me, it's very simple. If the, if the Dow, regardless of what the Fed says, because the Dow is holding up a little bit better than the others, because it's got a different kind of a mix, not everything there is involved with whether or not rates go up, because uh, you have some uh, you have some health care, you have you know you have a mix uh, insurance. So at the same time, I'm looking at this and I'm saying if the Dow at any point in the next three four by by early next week, if it's got traded into the thirty six thousands. That's a nice break to the upside. And if, if the Dow closes under uh, 35,000, it's a 35,587 right now, it says, hey, be ready for this arch formation. And what's the arch formation? Here's another pattern that we look at all the time on this particular chart. See, there's a red line comes down, and then it makes a rally, and then it turns down usually to peak A or to peak B. And that's the, the H pattern or dreaded H pattern, because if it takes out that left side low, it can go much deeper. It did exactly that. Look, right there's the H pattern that broke down. Well, now it's a much larger one. So if we start to see the Dow under 35,100, 35,000 means, uh oh, be careful, because we could come all the way back to the 200 period moving average. So I think for, for my way of looking at the market, the levels that I'm looking at are, are very clear. And that's that makes it better than saying, oh, my God, what's the Fed going to do? It's how the market responds. And, and we can see in the QQQ, we're talking about that just a moment ago. Where, where do I type that right there? So the QQQ, the index 100, failed at that arch formation right at that resistance line. There again, if the uh, the QQQ breaks under 378.90, the low of uh, a week or so ago, um, that's that's negative. It's going to be going much lower. And if it manages somehow or other to get to 401, it's trading at 388 right now. In the next week, it says it's overcome whatever the uh, Fed's decision is, and it's pushing higher. So I think the parameters and levels to watch are quite clear. What the Fed is going to do, we know that they're going to have to talk about raising rates. We know that they're in a difficult position because there are a lot of cross currents at this particular point. Is this the perfect time to actually be raising rates? Uh, it's going to be very interesting. And, and you know this very well in the housing sector. Look at this. The housing sector has done so well, even with the rates at the upper level, even though they're very low. 
Um, the Philadelphia Housing Index is just off its most recent high of 530. It's at 512. So I think uh, as far as what the Fed does, um, we know that it's, it's the speed with which they do it. I think that's the way we've got to look at it. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be no doubt interesting because what, you'll hear this tonight, folks, okay? And this is pretty wild, man. On the European Union, now, their, their inflation right now is running as bad as ours, folks. And uh, they came out, uh, the, uh, the, the woman that's in charge of the European Central Bank, they're coming out and they're saying that, hey, man, next year it's only going to be 2% and 2 to 3% the following year. It's like, really? It, yeah, this happened about three hours ago. And it's like, you got to be kidding me, man. I don't know what school these, guys, these folks went to, but it must be <laughs> the school of the blind leading the blind maybe or something. Have, because, maybe they have a different crystal ball than we do. <laughs> man, I, I just, you know, I mean, that seems to me like just a blatant, you know, how... We're all in the probability business, but how, how do you go from like six to seven percent to two and less, like in 12 months? Well, yeah. We I, do I, know that has historically, once rates start to rise, and I, I don't mean just one quick rally, but once they start to do that over different quarters, it's really tough to get them back in the box. The rates, oh, you know, totally. once they start, once you get this inflationary aspect, um, it's very difficult to curb it. So, uh, in fact, I was talking with someone earlier today, they were talking about Volcker. Uh, I mean, what Volcker did was very serious. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. we were talking about rates that were way up, you know, some mortgages, some of 16, 17 percent. Yeah, I was time. paying 14 and a half. So I bought no, my first house in 1971. It. it was 14 yeah. and a half percent, right? I mean, and now you're talking about something completely different. So, the, the, in the end, we will know because as far as I'm concerned, price dictates the, the trend. And I'm just saying, look, we're looking at the TLT right now. It's at 150. A break into the 153s says, uh-oh, rates are, yes, rates are definitely coming down and they're coming down sharp. But if there's a sudden plunge in the TLT. Well, you just bring up a great point. So, so what happens here, folks, is this. I mean, this TLT, you know, is rejecting a lower price out there. And, and what we have, and now this is what's different. We have worldwide, they're buying our bonds. So, you know, we all yes. keep looking at the United States, but guess what? This is a worldwide phenomenon, folks, for U.S. bonds. You know, pretty wild. That's right. Have a great one. Have a safe one, Basil. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.